time. Hello, judges. My name is Carlos, and I come from an outstanding coffee-producing country, Honduras. We are a country with over 120,000 coffee-producing families, and I'm immensely proud to be one of them. I live in a small touristic town called Copan, and for the last 12 years, I've worked as a barista, serving coffee to visitors from all over the world. Today, more than ever, customers want to know more clearly what happens during coffee production, what brews and remains in the cup, and whether or not this has a positive or a negative effect on human health. I feel we all share that concern, and it's called environmental health. For today's drinks, you'll be tasting ingredients from Honduran producers who rely on regenerative agriculture. This style of farming promotes harmony between nature and our communities and focuses on creating healthier ecosystems to leave our land, waters, and climate in better shape for future generations. So let's begin with the milk course. I want to show you how I designed the milk specifically for this coffee and how this will enhance your taste experience to an utterly different level. I'm adding whole milk to this centrifugal separator, which divides it in two flows milk with a higher water content and milk with a higher solid content. This separation leads to milk 10% richer in proteins, vitamins, fats, and sugars, making your final drink thicker and creamier tactile sensation. Now, to maximize sweetness, we must know the milk's primary sugar is a disaccharide called lactose. And lactose is the combination of two simpler sugars, glucose and galactose. But what happens if I break this structure down enzymatically? Our, our taste buds perceive simpler sugars better than complex sugars. So my final product here is a sweeter and creamier lactose-free milk that will marry my espressos harmoniously. Now, I did this process in advance to be able to pasteurize and chill my milk to two degrees. For this recipe, I'm using a coffee ratio of 22 grams in for 44 grams out. I aim for a high TDS espresso to complement this high TDS milk without being overshadowed. I will be steaming the milk to 55 degrees. At this temperature, together with my espressos, the flavors become more expressive and the sweetness more enjoyable. And finally, I will be serving these drinks in three ounce cups. And I would like you to enjoy them in at least three sips. The coffee that I'm serving you today comes from producer Moises Herrera from Finca El Puente in La Paz, Honduras. Grown at 1,600 meters above sea level, this coffee farm is a true example of regenerative agriculture. Moises and his wife focus on creating healthier soils, avoiding polluting water systems, and increasing biodiversity. Their conscious farming practices and distinctive terroir contributes to the flavors of this fully washed geisha. In this drink, you will enjoy delicious flavor notes of citrus peel, roasted nuts, and toffee sweetness. The body has an incredible creaminess and velvety texture, and the aftertaste 
is delicious butterscotch. Please enjoy. I'm thrilled to pair specialty coffee with the specialty milk. And today that is possible thanks to Finca Santa Clara in Honduras. This farmer provides his cattle with incredible kindness and cares for them as community members rather than commodities. His name is Emilio Guerra, and he is my brother. Please enjoy. Again, in this drink, you will enjoy delicious flavor notes of citrus peel, roasted nuts, and toffee sweetness. The body has an incredible creaminess and velvety texture, and the aftertaste is delicious butterscotch finish. Please enjoy. Judges, I believe that a milk separator is a convenient tool for specialty coffee shops, as it produces milk with high or low solid contents anywhere. With this tool, we can continue to innovate and create different experiences and enjoy specialty coffee even more. Please enjoy. For your espresso course, I focused on three variables, roast, ratio, and temperature. For the roast, I'm using a 70 angstrom light roast to highlight the complexity of the raw flavors. I did this roast slowly to allow more sugar caramelization and balance acidity. The development time was short to enhance tropical fruit flavors and citrus notes. And finally, because this is a light roast, I let my coffee degas for 12 days to reduce carbonic acid extractions. For the ratio, I'm using 22 grams in for 55 grams out. I prolong the ratio to balance the acidity due to its roast, process, and coffee varietal. A lower concentration of espresso will brighten up the palette of flavors true to this coffee variety. And temperature. I try different temperatures, yet at 93 degrees, I obtained an extraction that resulted in higher tropical fruit flavors and medium high sweetness. Please, evaluate the crema and wait for my instruction to drink. Please, evaluate the crema and wait for my instruction to drink. In your espressos, you will enjoy delicious flavor notes of mango, papaya, chamomile flowers, and caramel sweetness. The body is medium low weight with an elegant silky texture. And the aftertaste is a delightful combination of citrus zest and caramel sweetness. Now judges, please stir three times, evaluate my espressos while I get ready for your signature course. Please enjoy.
for your signature course. I want to complement my coffee's tasteful attributes with ingredients that showcase the beauty of regenerative agriculture. My first ingredient is a coffee cherry yogurt. I mashed and cooked one kilogram of fresh coffee pulp with brown sugar for an hour to get a jam. I then mix it in a one-to-one -one ratio with a Greek-style yogurt I made with low TDS milk from the separator. The idea behind this is to reuse, to innovate, and transform byproducts. I'm adding 8 ml to complement my coffee's fruitiness, body, and texture. My second ingredient is an infusion of three grams of chamomile flowers and 10 grams of bee pollen in 100 milliliters of hot water for six minutes. Now, this bee pollen comes from farmer Ricardo Diaz, who has dedicated his life to the conservation and study of Honduran stingless bees. By adding 20 milliliters of this infusion, I'm building a new layer of floral flavors in my final drink. Now, talking with Ricardo, he explained it, how our native stingless bees are specific pollinators to a great list of plants, including coffee. So I realized that these bees are genuine silent farmers, giving us the best ecological services to make modern agriculture possible. So my final ingredient is their honey. This is a sweet delicacy that tastes like ripe bananas with hints of eucalyptus. I'm adding 8 ml to complement my coffee's sweetness and balance acidity. Now judges, just in case you missed any information, please take the booklets with you at the end of this presentation. I'm now blending to integrate all my flavors together and add texture to the final drink. Now this drink will be slightly warm and I would like you to enjoy it in at least three sips. You will enjoy delicious flavor notes of pineapple, raisins, and chamomile florals. The body is silky and smooth, and it has a delicious sweet black tea finish. Now judges, to enjoy this drink, please put your clipboards and pencils down for just a moment. I kindly ask you to hold the glass with both hands during your evaluation. This gesture is an invitation to express our gratitude and care for everybody and everything that makes a specialty coffee production thrive together with nature. Please enjoy. Thank you. Time. <laughs>